Hello, from Los Angeles. Welcome back to Ever Talk Live. I'm so excited to welcome our next guest. He's an author of Letters to a Dead Friend, Brad Warner. Welcome to the show. Hi, how are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. Good. How are you? I'm doing all right. I made it here. You so. did indeed. <laughs> so, Brad, tell us, what is this book? What are these letters and who are they written oh, for? Uh, well, uh, try to make a short version. In uh, I, I've been going, um, I've been writing books about Zen since uh, 2004. My first book was Hardcore Zen. And since 2009, I've been doing these tours through Europe uh, where I just go and lead retreats and I talk about Zen meditation and all this stuff. Uh, and in the year 2014, two friends of mine back, uh, I'm from Akron, Ohio, uh, who were people I knew back in Akron from the punk rock scene that I'd been part of before I got into Zen. Uh, they were both, uh, as I was touring, dying of cancer and I was mm -hmm. in communication with, with one of them during the tour and writing back and forth to him. Uh, and the day he died, I wrote this little diary entry that was a bit like a letter to him, like uh, like all the things I'd wished I'd said to him. And uh, several years later and a few books later, I decided uh, that that would be a good framework to write a book about Zen. So I took the first letter, the, the first chapter of the book is almost verbatim that diary entry. The rest are are kind of uh, more made up letters than that one, but uh, but it all follows the same format. Mm. Mm. What do you feel that folks will love most about this book? <laughs> I don't know. I, I try to put uh, a lot of humor into it. Most books about Zen Buddhism mm. tend to be very dry and academic, yeah. and I... Uh, I actually kind of like those books sometimes myself because I'm, you know, I, I get into that sort of thing. But I realize that's not for most people. Uh, so, so I think the humor of it comes out, and the uh, the the feelings that I had for both of these these people, I really tried to put that in and write very sincerely, exactly as if I thought they could read them. Yeah. yeah. So one of the things I love most about this book, um, there are a couple of things. One, that it is entertaining, but it's also extremely enlightening. Yeah. I find that very interesting. I also like the conversational tone because it's written in letters. Um, you know, you're, uh, how does this book, I mean, obviously it's dramatically different from previous books, but was it much more difficult writing this book than the previous ones or did it flow more easily? Yeah, it was, it was difficult to, because once I decided to do this, I decided it had to be real. I mean, obviously they're not real letters, yeah. uh, but as, as much as possible, I, I wanted to write it exactly as if one or the other of these people could read it. So I had to really kind of focus on, you know, how I felt about them and what I thought that they would want to hear, you know, from me if they could read it in the afterlife or whatever. I did a go back and, and uh, revise it a little bit to make it more readable, but really everything in the raw state was very much uh, directed at these people. So that was, that was emotionally difficult. Yeah. You know, it's interesting to me, I heard an expression once that I thought was, um, you know, sort of inspiring is that first you write the book and then the book writes you, <laughs> right? Yeah, kind of. Yeah. yeah it, it's, it's a really weird thing writing books because I, I had uh, wanted to be a writer since I was a teenager and writing books about Zen Buddhism was not the thing I wanted to end up doing. I, right. I imagine myself as a science fiction writer or maybe a screenwriter or something. Especially you mentioned punk rock. It yes. just doesn't seem like... Yeah, yeah. The first book I wrote was Hardcore Zen and it was subtitled Punk Rock Monster Movies and the Truth About Reality because at the <laughs> time I was working for a company who specialized in making uh, monster mm. movies. Uh, I was living in Japan. So uh, it, it's, it's been a weird sort of journey that, and, and making a living out of it has been kind of interesting because I'm just putting myself out there all the time and of course things come back to you. Yeah. And some of them are good and some of them aren't so good, but you know, you just do it. So if there's anybody out there, maybe an inspiring writer, an author, um, or maybe a teacher and they want to get their message out to the world in a bigger, better mm -hmm. way, what recommendations would you have? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Uh, yeah. You know, I, I don't know. It's, it's easier nowadays to get, you know, to get up there. You can, I, I've, I started a YouTube channel two years ago and that's uh, it's not massively successful but it's you know it's going well and and i i wonder if i'm reaching more people with that one than with the book sometimes yeah um but it's it's very easy to put something out it's just you, you put it out there and you don't know how people are going to respond to it so you kind of have to you know work this dialogue mm -hmm. with your audience and 
and build from there, I think. It really requires you to practice what you preach, doesn't it? In yeah. terms of the Zen and... <laughs> so what is your overall message? My overall message? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Every time I get asked that, I don't know. Uh, and, and the reason is because I, I started practicing Zen meditation when I was in my late teens, and it was, it was purely a personal thing. And, and I found it incredibly useful, and I am probably not at all the demographic mm -hmm. that would get into something like Zen. I was never into spirituality or any of this. I played bass in a punk rock band and I just stumbled across this thing. So I suppose the only message I have is I, I, I want to be able to present this thing that I found very useful to, uh, to people who probably wouldn't encounter it any other way. Yeah. You know, they wouldn't read those books that are in the, you know, the new age section of the bookstore with the flowers on the cover, you know, that yeah. kind of stuff. I think that's one of the things you do well is you make it digestible and sort of palatable and easy for people to sort of process. What tips have you learned in order to do that well? Because I think that in of itself is an art. Tips. Yeah, I don't know. I, 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 as I mentioned earlier in the show, I, I do this Zazen meditation every day and it's a really, really, it's probably the most basic bare bones form of meditation that you could find it, it, we call it just sitting because that's what it is you know you're not even trying to be mindful or anything like that so i i do that every day every morning and every night and i've been doing it for 35 years and uh god i, I you know i just try to keep on that on that path and watch watch myself and not worry too much about what other people think of it and and you know how they judge it uh, just love that. Brad, please tell everyone where they can find and follow your journey and, of course, speak your book. Well, uh, I have a, a blog at hardcorezen.info, and it's hardcorezen.info because we couldn't get .com. <laughs> <laughs> so if you go to hardcorezen.info, there's, uh, there's the recurring blog, there's links to the YouTube channel, there's ways you can buy the book, and everything else is there. That's fantastic. Wonderful. Thank you. Very Thank much. you very Stay much. Stay tuned. We'll be back with more on Talk Live.